What's good, YouTube? Back at it with another video today. Getting cracking with the college stories. Got to get back to the college stories of my coach, Horace Broadnack. Okay, so basically I got to give a background on my coach. So basically my coach went to Georgetown, played under, what was the coach's name? John Thompson. John Thompson, we used to always say this, messed his brains up. Because the type of person that he became after playing there, to the type of person he was coaching us, was the expectation level was just, I guess it, was, it wasn't too high, but it was too high for us. Like, yes, we are D1 school. Yes, we are D1 athletes. Yes, we're trying to get as best as we can, get the best version of ourselves playing as we can. But there's levels. If we would have been at Georgetown, we would have been at Georgetown. If we was on national championship level, we would have been on national championship level. But that's just not the case there, sir. Okay? But <laughs> you have a coach that's played on that level. His expectation levels is through the roof. So that's what he expect from us. He used to always get on to us for how the first team was the national championship team. And then the second team, they would be like ranked top five in the nation because that's just how good they were and how much they um, pushed each other. But let me get into the craziness that this man took from that and brung to us. So he used to always have this philosophy where he was like, y'all don't want things earned. Y'all just want it given. Y'all just want things given to him. So we had a practice. He was like, I think it was my point guard. He was my teammate. He said, Kier, if I had a million dollars, do you want me to give you a million dollars? Or do you want to earn it? <laughs> so he was like, shoot, give it to me. If you just gonna give it to me, I'll just take the million dollars. Give, to, give me the million dollars right now. He absolutely lost it. See, that's the problem. That is the problem. Y'all just want me to give it to you. Y'all just want to give it to you. Y'all don't want to earn nothing. Y'all don't want to earn nothing. Y'all just want to give it to me. Raving and ranting. And you know it's crazy because until now, I never understood that too. It's like, if, I, if you had a chance to give me a million dollars or I had a chance to earn the million dollars, now I would earn it. I would prefer to earn it. Why? Because if I earn it, I'm going to be more inclined to keep it and invest it right and do the right things that I'm supposed to do with the money that I got. So if I earn it, I go and create discipline. I'm going to create work ethic, work habit, to even gain a million dollars, you gotta become a different type of person. And he had that type of thinking, but when we're at 18, 19, 20 years old, you're not thinking about that. You just gotta give me the money. Jerry Maguire, show me the money. Show me the money right now, cause I need it. I want it and I need it right now. <laughs> it was the same thing, like if something like that happened, we was playing the game. Can't remember where, I just know we was on the road. So when you're on the road, you get uh, meal money. So every day after, I we had to win. We had to have won the game. Did we win? No, I think we lost the game. I think we lost the game. Yeah. And we had to get meal money because we had to eat that night. So he had to give us the meal money. So another one of my teammates, he got to him. And he was like, y you want this, huh? He was like, yeah, yeah, I want it. That's the problem! That's the problem! Y'all just want me to give it to you! You just want me to give it to you! He looked around like... It's, it's real money. Of course I want you to give it to me. I want to go eat. Y'all just want everything Give it to you! You just want everything! You ran up to the locker room. You know the old lockers? Those graded iron lockers that you have like in middle school? Just ran up. Boom! Hit the locker, the locker just flew back. Like the amount of strength it took to hit that locker. He hit that locker so hard 
split open his whole hand. Ripped open his whole hand, just leaking. Blood leaking everywhere. I'm talking about blood just literally leaking everywhere all over his hand. He went back because he took the money. After he said that, he just took the money and just threw it all over the locker room. Just also, it's just like, I don't even know how much. Couple of, couple of racks just flown all over the ground. And everybody just sitting there like, okay, what are we gonna do? Because like, I kinda need this food money, but I ain't finna go pick it, pick it up. He goes, pick it up, bloody hand and all, and just starts to go and just start handing out the money. <laughs> and then the assistant coach comes, try to check his hand, try to give him like a, a, a towel. Try to go give him a towel so he can like dry, like clean his hand, like put, put some pressure on your hand. You're bleeding, bruh. Put some pressure on your hand. Get away from me! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! I don't want it! <laughs> like, for what I heard though, I heard he's a whole different person now. He's a whole different person than like I had a t one of my teammates from back then. He had he left. He left college, came back. He left college. He came his freshman year, not my freshman. I left. He came the freshman year, and he left because of our coach. He said he was just too crazy. He wasn't the type of person for him. He couldn't coach. He couldn't play under him. Came back his senior year and said he. 100% completely did a whole turnaround. He's not nowhere as crazy as he was and all the antics and stuff. Now he's just like, they won a national, they won like a, um, I think it was the SIACC cause they moved down since I left to like D2, I think it was. But they won a tournament. They won like the region, not regional, what is it called? Districts or like, your your group, whatever your group is that you win, you know what I'm saying, like your co conference. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Conference. They end up winning the conference championship. The girls end up winning the conference championship. So it's all love to SSU coach, whatever you, how you ever you did it, you know what I'm saying. I'm 100% supporting because, you know, that's our squad. And he put them on the map because he's a great coach. But I'm here to talk about the crazy moments. Crazy moments when I was there. He wasn't like that when he was with us. I can tell you that right now. He was not like that when he was with us. So I remember this specific time we're in practice, going back and forth in practice. And he said, I think it was that one of my teammates were running the play. And one of my teammates tried to run in there and get like a steal. And the big man just turned, bop, knocked him right in the jaw. Fell straight on the ground whole jaw broke broke his whole jaw so everybody like dang came over here to try to see what's up what are y'all doing get away from him are you a doctor you ain't no doctor get away from him he shouldn't have even been down there in the first place that's why he got hit in the mouth <laughs> bro what <laughs> he got hit in the mouth because he's trying to play basketball but his jaw's broken nobody better not get close to him ain't nobody a trainer none of y'all are trainers don't touch him. Leave him there. We waiting for the trainer. He's sitting there holding his jaw. Can't move. Wondering what's going on. He can't even hold his jaw because he just got his jaw broken. I can't even check on my boy. I can't check on him because I'm not a doctor. I still want to see how it... Nope. What are you going to do? What are you going to do because he got a broken jaw? You better get back to practice. So we literally had to get the pra practice back to practice. And we're sitting here looking at the corner of our eye like, dang, bro, is DJ all right? He just got his no, he just got his whole jaw broken, and we can't even come and check on him. He was like the level. I, I will say is the level of preparation, because he used to always say, it's not punishment, it's preparation. If your coach ever tells you that, if you ever had a coach that tells you, it's not punishment. It's preparation. We was prepared. Because the amount of running that he used to put us through, I specifically remember this one time. It's after the season. Like, we used to always have our workouts before the season. Before the season started, we used to always get up in the morning, hit the track, 
early in the morning. Run like we run like six laps, or we run like a mile and a half, and then we run like two like single laps with time. All of our laps were always time. We used to get up in the morning. We used to always run time. Always run the time like mile or mile and a quarter. I think it was the time mile, and then we just run like two singles in a specific amount of time. So that was like our preseason workout regimen. But so after the season, we never have anything. It's just you're pretty much free until preseason comes back around the next year. But this year, I think we had to like email him or email our classes or and something we had to email as a team. Season's over with, everybody's just chilling. He was just like, email me your stuff. Let me see so we can go through it so we can make sure everybody's eligible, going who needs summer classes, all this and that. Like six people did. Out of like 15 people. Six people emailed them. So now we're having problems because we can't see who's going to summer school, who needs what, who needs this because <laughs> not everybody emailed them. We just got a mass group text. Everybody be in the gym. Six o'clock. Which really means 5.50, which really means 5.30 because you better be warmed up because he's coming 10 minutes early. And then we're getting to whatever it is he has us to do. Soon as he walks in, 6 o'clock in the morning, 5.50 in the morning. Because like I said, he says 6, it means 5.50, 10 minutes early. Comes in, sideline. No questions asked, no nothing. Sideline. Immediately. Sideline. Everybody, sideline. We had to run this joint called a ladder. Four across, eight, 16. Um, I think it stopped at 16. Four, no, four, eight, 12, 16, 16, 12, eight, four. All time. So we trying to run, we running them. People just start dropping. Even the best runner on our team, he was dropping. Like, oh, I can't do this, bro. Like, it was to the point that we wasn't even running the circuits of 4-8. It was just people just running. <laughs> it was just running back and forth, back and forth, until people was just like, there was no more count. It was just like an endless run. We were just running and running. And then since then, we had to get up and run every single day. Or like, it was like a Tuesday and Thursday. Now we got preseason. Postseason workouts of conditioning. Like the season's over. We normally do this at the end of the summer going into the season. Like we just got done with this postseason workout starting from now. Y'all don't sit the next time I ask y'all to do something, you better do it. So now we're gonna have postseason workouts. So Tuesday, Thursdays, six o'clock, be here. So we had to come to the gym because we couldn't use the court. We wasn't using the field no more. We was using the gym. And the gym had like a loop at the top. So I think it was like eight times or it's like 10 times around the top is like one mile. But it's shorter, it's more compressed. So we just had to run the mile and to run the singles. So we had the, the ultra runner, ultra marathon runner, Josh Montgomery, my teammate, run all day non-stop so he's like if Josh passes you you gotta run the mile again run it again and Josh is one of those overachiever I'm out he was gone so you literally if you don't keep up with Josh or at least stay in his sight and he laps you you had to run another mile and I ain't seen it no not for me I don't want no parts of that. I was, I was a fairly decent runner, so he ain't never lapped me. But some people got lapped, and I felt bad for them because it was like the the word same group will forever be burnt into my head because same group means like when we're running sprints and you don't make the line and you hear the word same group, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, same group. You mess around and around. 15, 20 uh, down and backs because one person missing every time. And then you still got the rest of what we have to finish as a team. That's the crazy part. It's not 
punishment is preparation. He's trying to prepare you for life. And he ain't got nothing to do with basketball. It's a beauty to his madness, basically, what he was trying to portray to us. The beauty of his madness. And he did by far, he was like a mad scientist, like literally mad, but basketball was his tool that he used, his chemistry. And we were just like the things he used, but by far, mad scientist. He was a, he used to always say, I'm the Hulk, like I said, the Hulk. When you get in those lines, ain't nobody beating the Hulk. And by far, he was undefeated. You hear me? Undefeated. Until next time. Bye.